Today is Adam Young. Uh, Adam is, has been the executive director of the David Thomas Foundation for the last 10 years. The foundation has been cited by the Wall Street Journal as one of the top athlete foundations in the country. Uh, they've donated over $3.7 million to local charities. We can talk a little more about that here in a minute. In addition to his duties with the foundation, uh, Adam serves as David Thomas business manager and has been recognized as one of the top 40 in the 40 in the Shreveport uh, business community. Currently, he's overseeing the development of the David Thomas Academy. We're going to hear more about that as well. It's a 60-acre facility that's slated to open this August. Uh, Adam received a BA degree in mass communications from LSU, and he's the father of four girls, including triplets. And he says he enjoys tennis, fishing, and golf. I'm not sure when, but please join me in the Adam. Just a uh, 
he, and knowing David too, so like somebody else did, he didn't want people calling his name. He didn't want it to be called the David Times Academy to where that's where people were headed. So he, he doesn't even, it's 265 to him, and that's kind of, you know, we, we've done the David Times Academy and he's not around. Just to, <laughs> just to show you where we are, um, this, right off of Burt Coons, uh, here's the, the inner loop right here, here's Burt Coons. This is our property all through here. Um, this, you know, just a, in that part of town to be able to have this much land um, was very significant for us because with the, the interstate, you can really get there in no time. And it's with the bird coming the only problem, you know, there's the traffic issue, and it's kind of like that Yogi Berra line where they say that uh, no one in the restaurant is too crowded. Um, you don't go there because it's too, I don't go there because it's too crowded anymore. Or no one goes there because it's too crowded. Well, that's the same thing on the, on the Burke Coons um, thing is that it's, it's crowded and it's, it's five lanes, but we think that the traffic there is, is going to be a, a plus in the long run. Here's just a diagram, a drawing, a rendering of what we have being built. And it's being built as we speak. And we're, we're looking at a, an August opening. Um, Mark Snow and Matt Wallace and Ryan is our engineering provider vendor. They're here, so. I'm assuming we're still on schedule for an August opening or not. No work being done today, obviously, at lunchtime. But, um, we have on the far west side, there's nine par three holes, and those are all between 80 and 120 yards. Uh, and they're not really replicas of anything, of a particular hole, but they're all, every curve, bump, hill, is out here for a reason, all because there's a, you know some shop guys and things that I wouldn't even be able to explain, but it's something that David Tom is aware of. And those nine par three holes all have meaning and value um, to, to why they're created in that pattern. As you see on, we kind of have it, this will be the, the clubhouse area here, and then there's two separate tee boxes. The tee box up further to the north is what we're calling, the, that'll be the members area. The part further to the south is for the, the juniors and the public. On the far east side, over by Sand Beach Bay, we have three regulation holes, a long par five, a long par three, and another par four. So we have 12 holes all together. We actually have 20 greens when you come out with the putting greens and chipping greens. And so it's not just a driving range, but it's not just a par three course. Um, we've met with a lot of people with the executive level, the PGA of America, and even the USGA has just come out with a new program pushing in time for nine. But everyone says we're ahead of the curve, and this is kind of where the game is, is headed. The people's time and schedules of five hour rounds of golf is, you know, that, that's what's hurting the game. It's taking too long. Well, out here, you can come here to lunch, leave work a little early, practice, chip and putting. But you can also still get the ball in the hole, post some type of score, any number of holes. So the facility is, we think, kind of a little bit of way to the future. I mean, building an 18 hole golf course wasn't needed in this town. Not many places need new golf courses. But some, and we're, we think this is only going to help the East Ridges and some traces and all the, the, the golf courses around because we just think it's going to actually just increase create more golfers. <laughs> this was just uh, one day David was messing around, hitting the first shot. This was just on what's going to be eventually the par four hole. And we just showed, because I think it, even without the green grass there, you can still visualize, you can see where the fairway is going to be, and that's the corridor. Again, right off the of Burkins, right in the middle of town, but a beautiful piece of property with a lot of pine trees, cedar trees, and it's, um, people don't really know it's there, but it's, it's really coming along and looking fantastic. Um, we're fortunate to have not only David here, but Jim Light in the middle. He's been a golf, lives, lives in Shreveport, lived here for well over 20 years, but he's worked for Jack Nicklaus for most of his life as a course designer. And so to have someone of that caliber here on property every day is 
truly a blessing. Uh, the gentleman in the red shirt is the, the shaper. Right? His name is Sam. They've done all the work at Augusta National. Every time that Augusta National does some tweaks to their course, they've hired uh, this Sanders Golf Group. And, and to, 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 I guess I'm telling you that just because of the quality and the level that's being done out there is really uh, second to none. These are just some pictures of you know the, the, the course laying shape and the way they're digging out the greens and putting in the bunkers. I mean, it's just um, they've already put all the drainage in. They're putting irrigation in as we speak. That's kind of a, a, the final piece to the golf course construction puzzle. Uh, after they put the irrigation in, they'll just grass the entire court course, sprig it, and then they'll just have a three-month growing period. That's, that's what gets us on pace for the uh, August opening. Just some more shots of, of the golf course coming along. Now the clubhouse is, this is the rendering Somdahl uh, Architects did the drawing for us. Um, we haven't started construction of the clubhouse yet. We hope to or plan to start uh, sometime this this summer before before we open in August we'll at least start the construction of it. The, the building is kind of divided up into three different segments. Uh, on the far right side is what we call the kids area. That's actually um, has a name already, uh, Humana Youth Achievement Center. Humana is one of David's corporate sponsors. Uh, their CEO, Mike McAllister, is from Shreveport. So there's been a lot of ties and synergy. They are in the golf. And Humana kind of kicked us off with a with a million dollar donation to our foundation. And so all of our youth programs will be run out of the multi-purpose room over on the far right. In the middle, uh, as you come in, that's just the, the pro shop kind of area, lobby area. And on the back is some indoor outdoor hitting bays. And then on the left hand side, locker room, and this is kind of more of our member side, which is our revenue side locker rooms, grill area, and then upstairs will be a small fitness area and some office space. And that's just the back elevation. Um, you can see the hitting bays. Again, just things, things that aren't really offered in Shreveport Bossier. I mean, there's in, in inclement weather, there's not a place to, to practice. Um, you know, this is going to have the latest audio, you know, video, and launch monitors, and track bands, and everything that, that's available. In, other areas that just we don't have access to here in Shreveport or in Miller Housing out of a 265. This is a rendering of just a multi purpose room that, that Humana um, is sponsoring. Let me talk a little bit about the, the, the kids' programs. It was important for David um, to not only, I mean, there's a program called the First Team. We're in it. Our, our, 265 and the David Town Foundation is the First T affiliate. First T is a national program uh, underwritten by the PGA Tour to uh, get golf uh, introduced to people of all backgrounds. And we're we're gonna, we're doing that. We're going to that's part of the plan. We're a First T affiliate, so we'll have this the children who are currently enrolled in the program, which is being housed at it, the old Lakeside Golf Course. They'll be able to participate and practice and get better in get tutored after school and get healthy snacks. I mean, it's, just, it's not just about golf. None of this is just about golf. There's a lot of other uh, things we're gonna be able to reach the kids and touch the kids without, it's not trying to make them all the next David Thomas or Hal Suttons or Tiger Woods. But we just, golf is just kind of the carrot to get them interested and to improve their lives, social skills, grades, all across the board. But in addition to just the first tee, um, kids, David was, raised by his grandparents and they when, when he it really there was a time of kids in the neighborhood in Old Green Acres would be say, all right we're going out to the club we're going out to Trooper Country Club and David wasn't a member of any place and eventually his parents his grandparents got a membership to Palmetto and that was what enabled him to go play golf and he goes we were two hundred dollars a month his, his, his grandfather was a retired military Grandmother was a school teacher. Um, 
they were two hundred dollars a month from just from never playing golf. So there's a, a level of this middle class that David wants to uh, to get those kids out playing golf. If their parents are not members of a country club, not members of Eastridge or Southern Trades or Shreveport Country Club, then they're probably not playing golf. They're doing something. They're playing soccer and little league and other things. They're just not playing golf. And he wants to attract those kids and get them into a game that has given him so much. And then the third level of kids will be the ones that are uh, already playing. They're already established golfers. They're the elite players, high school. I mean, I don't know how much you can come follow golf closely, but it's it's really unheard of what's going on right now. And, and, and the, the market, our size, there's a gentleman, uh, Phil Barber, he wants to appear to His son, Philip, is, I, I think he's number one in the world for his, his age. He's an eighth grader at St. Mark's. There's another gentleman, Todd Burns, he wants to tie the blues. His son is a sophomore at Bird. He's top five in the country. There's David's son, Carter, pretty good player. He just finished seventh in the state as a freshman at 5A. Um, there's another kid named Nathan Johnson that's ranked nationally. And then, I'm like, there's probably at least 10 kids in the next four years that are top flight Division One scholarship golfers. And that just doesn't happen. Missy's been around here forever. She knows all the golfers come out here. To have 10 come out, 10 to 12, in that short amount of time is unheard of. But to have just some really top-notch elite ones is an incredible, too. And I think that the facility we're building will even make those kids even a little bit, a little bit better. <clears throat> the even for those who aren't golfers in this room and maybe don't care about it, I just wanted to kind of explain some of the things that we think that this facility, this academy, um, are going to bring to, to Shreveport Bowyer. Um, again, with David's name attached to it, um, we get the ability to tap into a lot of marketing, which I call different than advertising, and it's free exposure. And all the golf magazines, I'm already aware of it, they're waiting so we get a little bit more green grass out there to, to take the pictures. But national uh, coverage, Golf Channel wants to do um, stories out there, features, playing with the pros, I mean, just all these things, which kind of puts Shreveport a little bit in the, in the spotlight, um, just on this facility that's being here. And because it is, has some of the unique characteristics and qualities about the facility and just the way that it's being put together. Um, you know, we probably project a little bit of a, uh, an economic impact. Um, just some of the programs we're going to run, A, we're going to have some junior camps. These are, these are probably going to be more for the higher level play kids. The parents from regionally, you know, will want to send their kids up here for a two-week camp at whatever, whatever amount. But those kids will have to stay in hotels, parents stay here for a period of time. We're going to have top 100 instructors come through here on a, the demand will dictate that, but at least every two months, well, when these top 100 instructors get here, it's not gonna be just for our members, it'll be for the region. And these top 100 instructors have such a following that there'll be people that'll come from Dallas, Little Rock, Jackson, to come take a lesson from while they're here at our facility, so they got to stay someplace, need someplace. So we do expect this to be a to be a draw. Um, when when we're fully operational and the clubhouse is built, um, we we'll probably have 12 to, to 15 employees. Um, you know, new employees. It's not uh, going to take the place of GM, but it's you know it's a little little something. We hired our um, first full-time employee last week. Uh, his name is Scott Toller. He, uh, he was the assistant superintendent at a club called Lock and Bar uh, down in Houston, which is, for those in the golf community, is real high end, um, a real quality facility. And people, when we first told them, like, how did we get somebody from Houston at that type of place to, to come to Shreveport? Well, we were 
pretty fortunate in the sense that his family, he's from here, and, and he still has family here, and he makes it with kids. He, he never thought there would be an opportunity for him to come back home um, and, and work, and it just worked out. Where we got somebody that was just supremely qualified uh, to run our the superintendent position, and it was a, a calling for him to come back home. Uh, if we didn't build that golf there, the 60 acres, you know, it, who knows what it could have been development wise, but a lot of concrete, parking lots, whatever. I mean, the fact that now it's a, you know, basically a 60 acre green space, um, I think from an environmental standpoint is, um, is important. And again, I think the, what I started off with, uh, this morning I was next door, um, Bon Chief Director had their annual Cherish the Children breakfast, and it's a, again, we support that and have uh, through the foundation for, for many, many years, and it's a great organization, and that breakfast is always very touching and moving. But the reason they're having that breakfast is they have to raise $1.6 million every single year to kind of operate their program. Well, we have, we'll have an operating budget as well. The only difference is we're going to be targeting, we're just going to be running ours like a business to where we're targeting the, the golfers and running golf camps and programs to get the revenue in so we can do all the children's programs we were talking about at no cost to the taxpayers, no cost to um, just the, the fill the handout type, type money. And that, that self-sustaining um, component, I think, is is pretty key to uh, to the community by not not taking on undue burden. Uh, in just kind of in, in summary, uh, I think the community is going to be really proud of something that, that, that David is doing. It's um, you know how was very instrumental how something in the children's hospital and. To give us something along those lines is, is incredible. Golf doesn't necessarily, when you think of golf and all right, healthcare, it's maybe not, not quite the same, but again, it's, there's some different components of what we're trying to do out there. And at the end of the day, we think we're, we're going to be reaching a lot of kids and touching their lives, making, uh, making a better place for them. And, uh, making sure we a better place. I think it's, this is going to be something that's going to be uh, just one of the biggest stars um, for Shreveport when we get it done and we get it done right. Uh, I want to thank Scott and the Rotary for uh, inviting me and having me today. I am open to any questions that, uh, that aren't too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Cost for membership. Um, we can use the term uh, membership or donor and interchangeably. Um, for a $5,000 a year donation to, to the foundation gives a family access to this facility. Of that $5,000, there's a portion that would be considered goods and services received, and then the remaining portion um, would be tax deductible. So out of pocket is really not going to be five thousand when you can factor in the, the tax situation. So that's the revenue stream side. It is the is the five thousand dollars your donor slash member. Um, we've sold. We're also selling founding members as well, which is a, at a higher level and that's on for a lifetime um, worth of dues, so to speak. Uh, but anybody who's interested. We can definitely find time to sign people up for membership as well. Yes. How much of the five thousand dollars would you consider to be a donation? Still, yes. The question was how much of the five thousand is going to be tax deductible. Um, every year is going to be a little bit different. I mean, like this first year, people already made a five thousand dollar donation, but we're not opening until August, so. The goods and services received this year will be less than it will be next year when there's a full 12 months. In 2014, when the clubhouse is up, there'll be more goods and services received. And to, to not, 
we have a range, I would say, somewhere between uh, goods and services received of about 1,000 to 1,500. So the tax deduction portion would be roughly 3,500. And in a couple of years, it's actually more than that this year, but once it's fully operational, goods and services received about 1,500. It's in, right in the Jason D. Auto Mall, Burt Coons, kind of by the inner loop. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.